Hi, hello, and welcome back to another episode of Three Sides to Every Adoption. I'm adoptee Sarah Easterly, and with me here today is birth parent Kelsey Vanderbilt Ranyard and um, Lori Holden, adoptive parent. And we're just happy to be here um, on a really complex time of the year. It's National Adoption Awareness Month. And, um, or I should back up a little bit, it's National Adoption Month, technically. Um, and that's been that way since 1985 um, or 84, I believe, um, started by Ronald Reagan. Um, it was, that was a National Adoption Week. And then Bill Clinton named it National Adoption Month in 1995. Um, and there's been, um, you know, a, a focus since 1995 on um, National Adoption Month being technically about promoting the adoption of children and youth in foster care into permanent loving families. Um, but it has over the years become more of kind of a, um, it's gotten political, I will just say, and we can talk about that. Um, and so there's been a lot of movements uh, to flip the script. Uh, some credit to Amanda Transu Woolston for her book on that and trying to change the narrative. And then a lot of adoptees now embrace National Adopt Adoption Awareness Month rather than National Adoption Month. So um, anyway, there's a little bit of brief history and um, I guess I'll, I'll just, that's, that's the backdrop and that's what we're going to talk about. It's a really heavy time. There's a lot of emotion this time of month on a lot of different sides. There's a lot of adoption coming in our streams and our feeds and conversations, um, lots of content being put out there. So we're just going to talk about the month as a whole and how that affects each of us um, throughout this month. So um Kelsey, let's start with you. <laughs> yeah, this month is super overwhelming for me. Um, I I work in adoption. It's my day job. Um, I don't do I don't work in direct like cases or anything like that anymore. But I definitely still I work in public policy with adoption, and it's just heavy. I it's heavy every day, every week. Um, and so when it's November it's, it's kind of a lot. I, um, over the past year or so, I've tried to like balance out my social media feeds and, you know, follow some other accounts. <laughs> like I should have a life outside of adoption. So follow some stuff that I like and, and enjoy. Um, and then I feel like when it's November, the algorithm just throws adoption at me. Um, and so it's kind of just like, ugh, uh, you know, I care about it and I listen to other voices and I, um, fight for them and, you know, all of that, but, um, November is just a lot and, but I, I get it and I understand why it's important. Um, but this year I'm probably the most inactive I've ever been. I, I haven't really been posting at all. And I'm just kind of, and, and it's a busy month for, for me at work as well. So, um, but yeah, Sarah, how, how's this month for you? Well, um, you know, I'm, I'm in this, I feel very similar to what you just said. I mean, I like, uh, my self-care is my bunnies and my <laughs> guinea pigs. It's a lot. It's a lot of adoption in the feed. It's a lot coming through, you know, I think on all sides, I also, I care deeply. I like, I appreciate all the adoptees who are right there in the arena and educating and putting in a lot of work. I'm so thankful for that. Um, I think, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of a, adoption related tags historically and still prevailing that come up with little logos of adoption is beautiful. Um, and, you know, the rainbows and unicorn story of adoption gets put out there quite a bit. And so that's hard because it doesn't leave room for the nuances. Um, you know, it doesn't leave room for all the perspectives and, um, you know, it's complicated, you know, of course we want, if, if the heart of the spirit of what this is about, if, if about, find foster youth finding homes and they're generally older foster youth, I think is that was the idea behind this. Then of course that, you know, um, that's really important, but what tends to be kind of taking over is the, just, we made our beautiful family through adoption, infant adoption. And, um, it's a lot of the, the sunshiny, glossy, happy stories of that. Um, so which squeeze out, you know, a lot of us grew up with that. <laughs> 
And so it's like, we're finally like able to make some headway. And we have been in, in, in showing that there's more to that story than it appears. And then all of a sudden you're like, Whoa, it kind of feels like you're going back in time. Like maybe we shouldn't make as much progress as we thought we had. Maybe there's still more work to do. So again, I'm really thankful for the adoptees who are out there. Um, kind of combating that commodification um, that it feel that feel that kind of spirit of commodification of babies and families um, through that way and kind of glamorizing family separation and the trauma that that we all live with forever on the other side of adoption. Um, and you know, it's like you, I, I do it in small doses. I think adoptees have a tendency to feel like the weight of the world's on our shoulders and uh, to strive and, we do a lot of emotional labor in November and, um, and so it's, it's just really hard. <laughs> it's a hard month, just lots of like emotional dynamics at play. <sighs> Lori, I'm curious, uh, from the adoptive parents perspective, what, what are your thoughts? How's it? How's yeah, I, I am one of those people who did at one time think that adoption was win-win. I mean, what could go wrong? A baby gets a home and a home gets a baby and everybody's happy because um, that's it, it's a very two dimensional view of it. And that's what I was exposed to until I wasn't. And so I think I want to start out with some gratitude to the emotional labor of people who helped me add that dimension and that complexity um, to see behind the 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 pat ants, the pat representation of this over the years. And I, I want to say that I have seen such a difference in National Adoption Month, um, and it's it's metamorphosis into National Adoption Awareness Month, um, which is what I choose to call it. In my years um, on the adoption scene online, which is about I'm, I'm in 15 or 16 years now, it's so different because back then, what you what I was finding, I don't know if it's what everybody was finding, but I was finding the adoptive parent view. The adoptive parents were the ones that were speaking. And I think it started maybe with a little before Flip the Script. There was that swell in Flip the Script in 2014 that um, adoptees really did um, create this movement and provide all this emotional labor to help people understand the parts that they didn't know about adoption. And I think um, birth parent voices were part of that too. Um, I've actively sought them out to try to better understand this thing um, that is so much more complex than I ever thought. It sounded so simplistic. Um, you know, when you look at the proclamations about National Adoption Month, or you look at the, you know, when in pop culture, when adoption is discussed, it's on People magazine covers, and it's on, you know, lifetime happy, clean, tidy movies with a plot that evens up tidily at the end. And, you know, real life in adoption really isn't like that at all. So um, I just, I'm grateful for the emotional labor and for better under, I mean, uh, what's, what's the purpose of understanding all this? Well, it's to, so that I can be a better mom to my children and better understand. And then it's also to make the world of adoption more nuanced, like you said, Sarah, to, so that our policies at the bigger level and our practices at the home level are more in line with what adoptees experience really is and how to how to just better meet everybody's needs it's respective of everybody i i mean i've only been doing adoption national adoption month i guess i've only been seeing the content online and everything for six years and so but in that six years i think there's been a huge like drastic change in what's um being put out content wise and who it's coming from on line during this month i've seen just in the past like maybe two or three years i think i've seen a huge shift in um people i mean people listening to adoptees of course it's not 100 percent. we're not at 100 percent um but it's a huge um uptick in people you know listening to adoptees and and birth parents as well um but i yeah and of course for me in my short span of time post placement, that's not um, that's a huge uh, a huge shift in the the culture of it all. But of course, if you've been in it much longer, it's probably feels like a long time coming. But of course, we're not there yet. 
Um, but for me, it feels very encouraging because I haven't really been in this that long and it's like, oh, it's already changing. But of course that is because the wheels have been in motion for it for so long um, because of the work of, of people that were, you know, came before me. Kelsey, I'm really, I'm so glad to hear you say that. And this is year five for me, so that I've been actively kind of following, but I have, I do have a question in my head and that is, does it feel like it's changed? Like, do we think it's really changed? Um, or is it because we're like, are we in bubbles? I guess that is a question I have. Like I I'm following, I'm following places that of course are going to be an adoptees like are in my, who are in my circles who are speaking out. And so I do question, you know, I think when I see, when I, when I look at the larger, you know, um, trend, I hope, I hope what you said is the case. And I, I believe that too. Yeah, I'm not going to be Debbie Downer, but sometimes I just ask myself, totally. am I in a bubble? <laughs> well, and I, I think that's a valid question, right? Because um, modern day social media and the fact that we even say modern day in front of social media is like crazy, but it's true. Like social media has come a long way as well. And so but modern day social media is so algorithm based. So we do get put into our silos. And um, so it is difficult to know, like, is this really changing? But I, I think it is. And I think because I have that bridge between what's going on with policy, what's going on in in agencies and attorneys, uh, law firms, and, and then what's going on in people's, you know, homes and stuff like that. I think there is a huge shift going on um i think that and and just the modern day like the just the politics of everything and the the culture is changing too and i think everybody feels that um going on so and i think that kind of spills over into adoption as well because there's narratives reaching people that don't even have anything to do with adoption um look at tiktok for example like this the stuff that TikTok shows you on your feed is algorithm based and it's it's so advanced that it's like the stuff that you see in your feed is not just people you follow. You can see other stuff that you might be interested in. So it'll say, oh, do you care about this issue? You might care about adoption. And so this is getting to people that you're we're not you're not normally reaching. Um, and that's kind of just how like news cycles are working anyways now. So I think we're reaching a lot more people in society. We're getting people to listen to voices that we they don't normally listen to. And um, those people are figuring out new ways to uh, make people care about these issues um, policy-wise and also with professionals. I know that I just went to... Um, NCFA's one day conference for professionals and it was all about ethics and stuff like that. Um, the sessions I went to were amazing. Like um, they were very progressive. They had, they had a, a session on like genetics and the, um, the ethics of DNA testing and they had an adoptee doctor on the panel and like, the, I, it was, I had never been to something so forward thinking in, in adoption, like, and there was a one on counseling birth parents and how we need to prepare birth parents for, for what happens post placement. And so like, these are things like they would have never been speaking to professionals about a couple of years ago. And I've been to those conferences every year. Um, and it's, it's like, there's like real things happening and there's people I, I hear from a lot of agencies and a lot of attorneys um, and we hear from some agencies with social workers that are saying to us uh, I want to change everything about the way we do things and I am waiting for this the owner or the executive director I'm waiting for them to retire because when they do we're going we're shooting ourselves forward and so I think that I've seen some agencies shift their business model to um, provide parenting support and placement support and go full nonprofit and, and so that they're not dependent on placements for funding. 
Um, and it's always more complicated than it sounds and it's not happening everywhere. We still have major, major issues to work through. We still have state law issues. We still have um, major loopholes and bad, bad actors. And there is, there is absolutely um, no shot that we are, <laughs> we are there. We are, we have not arrived. Um, but I a hundred percent think that there are things changing and that they're um, that like, you know, we're hearing from people that um, are doing the work and uh, they're, we have platforms now. I mean, it's such a different time than it was before, but we wouldn't be here without the people that did the work before. And I think that's a really important thing to remember, so. And to your point, Sarah, it is so hard. I mean, it, on all things, all things political to know if what you're perceiving out there is really what's happening out there or if it's just the algorithm and the selective perceiving that you get to do based on the algorithm, the algorithm. Um, so yeah, I, I really liked hearing your perspective on that, Kelsey. Um, and I was, I was really heartened to see NCFA tackling ethics in a genuine way. So my perception, whether it's the algorithm or not, is that there is, there is more emphasis on adoptive voices. There is more emphasis on birth parent voices. There's more speaking and there's more listening. There's also more adoptive parents listening and not doing all the talking like I'm doing right at this moment, <laughs> ironically. Um, and then the fourth piece, Kelsey, is the, like you said, the, um, the agencies. I've been speaking with agencies and um, over the years, I do hear them wanting to do better by everybody, including um, expectant parents and adoptees and just set things up better. They were going with the guidance they have and, and the guidance they had was not enough. The guidance they need is this groundswell that we're hearing. Yeah, so that's interesting. I worked with an agency in Indianapolis. For, uh, it was my first agency job and they were, they were awesome. And they kind of let me come in and just change a lot of their internal policies and processes. And, um, and then after I left, like they continued to do it. They continued to seek out other voices. Now they incorporate um, Angela Tucker in their transracial adoption piece. And they, everybody has to like train with Angela Tucker and, and get educated by her. And then there's all kinds of other programs that they've got going on that have, they've changed so much since I've left. But like, I felt very fortunate to be able to be a part of that process to put them on that track to go forward. And, um, and I've seen them even since I've worked there, I've gone back to see them and, um, and I've seen them really be um, heavily affected by, by some of the, the practices that were, you know, even with the social workers there that weren't working there when bad practices had been going on or anything like that. And so they've been really emotionally, mentally affected by some of this stuff and they are trying to, to do better and go forward from their history and learn from it. And I think if you're not doing that, you're gonna be running from it. And then you never really, um, you never really have give yourself the opportunity to do better. And so, uh, and do, and give their, the people that you serve the opportunity to have a better experience. And so, um, yeah, I think there's, there is opportunity to do that. And I, some, some are taking that some aren't, um, but we'll see, we'll see how this turns out. I mean, at first, when I started noticing some changes, I also noticed some letdown. So I think that some will also change surface level stuff. Um, I hear a lot about, oh, you know, you just, I was, I, I was so disappointed to read this thing about how this child was basically trafficked. Um, I just wish they would have called her an expectant mom because she wasn't a birth mother. <laughs> like, that's not the problem here. Like that is not the biggest issue that we have here. And so I think sometimes we get caught up in like the language and the language is important to get me wrong. Our words are very um, important and they should be intentional, but um, there's bigger problems going on. So I think, you know, and I'm getting kind of, I'm going on a tangent, but like there are some surface level changes. Those are not going to stand the test of time. They're just not. It's going to be those big 
internal policy shifts and perspective shifts that really um, make a huge impact. So. Thank you. Yeah, I think, you know, I, I agree, you know, aside from the bubble question I have, I do feel there's hope um, at Adoptive Voices. We, we were feeling like a swelling of being listened to and adoptees are being heard and our writings getting published. Um, you know, we kind of at Adoptive Voices declared 2022, the year of the adoptee, and we felt it, we really, and we have felt that. Um, so I do feel like I agree. And I think of, you know, book deals watching, you know, um, and adoptee written books getting a lot of attention. Uh, Melissa Guida Richards comes to mind. I know Cam Lee Small has a book coming out. Um, he's announced his deal, our book deal that shows more than the rainbow, the rainbows and unicorns. Um, when that comes out, like I think that we're finding homes for these things where I we didn't see that. So I definitely um I think I agree with you. Um, and I'm glad uh, and, and thankful. You know, Lori and I bumped into each other last week at an adoption mosaic event. We didn't realize we were both going to be there. And there were a lot of adoptive parents and they were listening to your point, Lori. So it's, and every time I attend an adoption mosaic event, that's what I see and I hear and I feel encouraged and, um, and it's terrific. Um, and then I, you know, I, I do know of other adoptees getting jobs at agencies, and I really hope that's not surface level. I hope that it's opportunities to make change like you were able to do, Kelsey, like we've seen Angela Tucker do. Um, I hope they're not being used. You know, it does make me nervous every time because it's like, oh, is this going to be, is this just a PR thing? Um, and, um, you know, the adoptees get used enough, please don't do that. But if they're truly empowered to make change, then I'm so excited. And I think, um, again, more, more just, you know, momentum for this change that we're talking about. And uh, that all seems to come down to November, <laughs> all of it just out there on, on display for the world. Two, I don't know if we have any parting thoughts, but one thing I wanted to make sure I touched on is just talking about Adoptee Remembrance Day. It's passed, it's October 30th. Um, founded three years ago by um, Adoptees Connect by Pamela Caranova, and just a day to remember all of the losses. There's a lot to Adoptee Remembrance Day, but um, kind of an adoptee movement to kind of get ahead of National Adoption Month and a National Adoption Awareness Month, um, and just focus on those who we've lost um, or those just losses that have come through adoption. So I just feel like we can't, I don't want to just leave that as a separate thing, I'd love to just um, say that it's a, if you don't know anything about it, we'll put information in the show notes. Um, and I would like to just put a special plug in. We did an adoptees on uh, recording of 10 adoptee voices writers who read their um, prose and their poetry for Adoptee Remembrance Day, very powerful. So just as we're talking about listening to adoptees and adoptee, um, adoptees kind of changing that narrative. I definitely um, just would love and uh, for everybody to, to go seek that out and listen to that. Um, anything else about National Adoption Awareness Month that either of you would like to add before we wrap up? I, I did want to just one more time emphasize the awareness piece because that's where the dimension and the complexity and the nuance comes is from gaining more awareness, not necessarily sharing your own awareness, but also finding something you didn't already know. I love that piece of the awareness. Um, and at this moment, um, you know, in these times, Sarah, Kelsey, and I are writing our book and we are trying to um, do this with the intention of raising the awareness for everybody in the three sides, plus to better understand each of the sides. So there are other silos, but then we're all also wanting to go cross silo so that together we can um, figure out what needs to be done have a clear path, um, know who, who everybody can know, like, what, what can I do? What can my piece of this be? When is it time to listen? When is it time to speak? Um, so that's our three plus sides to every adoption that we're working on. And this is, this is what we're living at this moment as we're trying to write this and bring all these pieces together. Yes. Kelsey, did you have anything? Oh, sorry. Sir. I, I would just, add, I just want to clarify just for the viewers in case you don't know why that, because I think it, I, I hope it's okay if I explain, Lori, as adults, uh, we are not expecting children to <laughs> child adoptees, but we're, we're saying all the adults in the room, let's understand each other and let's work together for change. Like, did I, is that fair? Okay. <laughs> 
Absolutely, absolutely. I'm so glad you clarified that. I think we've, uh, I think we've hit all the, the points on National Adoption Awareness Month or National Adoption Month. Um, but yeah, this is a this is a tough month for a lot of people. I think, um, yeah, it's overwhelming. It's a lot, but uh, hang in there because December's right around the corner. And um, you know, listen to the voices you wouldn't normally listen to, and and maybe also think about incorporating them into who you would normally listen to. Um, put them in your rotation. So yeah, we wish you a happy November and, you know, gear up for the holiday season. <laughs>